Alaska's Arctic encompasses some of the most remote and pristine wild lands on Earth. To monitor the health of Arctic ecosystems, researchers focus on specific species of concern that help serve as indicators of the overall health of the ecosystem. One species of concern is a small and elusive songbird that most visitors would miss but makes the treeless Arctic its nesting grounds. So my name is Heather Craig and I'm a biological technician with Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. And I'm also starting my first season as a master's student with the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And I'm studying the breeding ecology of Smith's longspurs. Smith's longspurs are a small songbird. The males have this uh, this yellow breast and a, like a, a black cap. The species has a very unique breeding ecology and that a male might breed with up to three females and a female might breed with up to three males. Each nest will have a mixed paternity, which means that, you know, the chicks aren't from all the same parents. So that's kind of what makes them unique from other songbirds. Um, they also uh, are a species that breeds at the tender tree line in the Arctic and um, they winter in a very small region in the lower 48. Um, a day as a Smith Longspur researcher um, typically involves um, getting up and hiking, you know, <laughs> a couple kilometers on, you know, tussocky tundra habitat. And um, during nest searching, it's a lot of, you know, sitting and watching a female and sometimes males um, just forage and try and distract you as they are, um, you know, going back to their nest. And so, you know, we might stumble upon a female and then you, you don't want to get, let her get out of your sight because, you know, she will lead you eventually back to her nest. And so you can sit there for two or three hours watching a single bird before you're successful, hopefully, and um, finding where she's nesting. We're uh, emphasizing finding nests and then banding um, adults and fledglings. And so we banded um, about, I think, 109 fledglings and 76 adults. And that's at two different sites. And, you know, the next year or two, we're looking at coming back and trying to see how many of those birds are returning. We're near the end of our project now. And so we've been doing a lot of veg. Um, our vegetation studies at each one of our nests to try and determine, you know, what a Smith Longspur is trying to key in on when they put a nest or build their nest. And so we're, um, you know, trying to estimate the abundance of certain plant species. So the goals of my project generally are to look at um, demographics and the breeding um, success of Smith's Longspurs. I'm, I have two um, study sites. One is at Slope Mountain, which is um, 30 miles from where we are right now at Adigan Gorge. Um, and it's, it, well, it's kind of in the foothills of the Brooks Range, uh, closer to the coastal, coastal plain. And then um, my other site is in Adigan Gorge, which is uh, kind of the closest spot to the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge that you can get from the Dalton Highway. Smith Longspurs are a, piece, a species of concern because um, of their, the small geographic area that they winter in. Um, they tend to winter in these large flocks of, with other birds on, you know, airstrips or in agriculture fields. And so, um, you know, as population sizes get bigger, um, in, well, human population sizes get bigger, um, you know, it, it has the potential to really impact these species that have a really small wintering grounds. And um, the other reason why some Longspurs are a species of concern is because they breed in areas of the Arctic that are kind of unknown. Um, they, they're on the tundra tree line, and so a lot of the areas where they are breeding, um, people just don't get to see them very much because it's off the road system. And so, um, you know, scientists have said that the population is, doesn't exceed more than 75,000. And so, you know, we don't really know how they will be affected by climate change or any other uh, factors like that. So it's a, a bird that we need to keep our eye on. 
Inventorying and monitoring Smith's long spurs is used in combination with other indicators to appraise the overall health of the ecosystem. As we understand the biology of long spurs a little better, we gain greater insight into one piece of a very complex puzzle, the Arctic ecosystem. Together, these indicators not only help public land managers make informed decisions, but they contribute to basic science and our understanding of the often hidden and complex systems of the Arctic.